हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम आरजी मैम इज विथ यू टू स्टार्ट द लास्ट चैप्टर ऑफ योर क्लास टेंथ दैट इज मैनेजमेंट ऑफ नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज सो स्टूडेंट्स इट विल बी एंडेड इन द सेकंड लेक्चर बिकॉज इट इज नॉट अ ब्रॉडर चैप्टर ओके इट इज वेरी शॉर्ट चैप्टर इन विच वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट ऑल द नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज विच आर प्रेजेंट ऑन आर अर्थ नाउ हाउ दे आर प्रेजेंट वॉट आर द क्वान्टिटी इन विच दे आर प्रेजेंट एंड हाउ वी शुड यूज आर नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज in a convenient way so that it will be available for the upcoming generations as well so students in this chapter firstly we are going to know that what are natural resources actually we count the forest and wildlife as a natural resource but we should know about this thing that what are forest okay the largest forest in the world the smallest forest in the world even we should know what is wildlife how we should conserve our wildlife okay actually the forest and wildlife both are interrelated to each other if forest exists the wildlife will exist but if forest does not exist then wildlife will also does not exist because many animals on this planet are only and only herbivores they are totally dependent on the autotrophs for their survival if the plants got damaged if we are doing continuously deforestation then we are just harming the wildlife and even our environment as in the last chapter we read about the greenhouse effect and global warming students even ozone layer depletion so these are all interrelated to each other how as we are doing deforestation on a massive scale so because of this what is we are doing we are harming our society the concentration of the carbon dioxide is getting increased and even it is increasing the temperature of our earth surface which is unsuitable for a particular human being and even animals to survive so what we are doing we are harming our society by ourselves only so how we should protect our natural resources we are going to count this thing also in this lecture so let us see firstly the content portion so first i am going to give you a brief introduction about this chapter that in this chapter we are going to learn all the things next forest and wildlife so we are going to learn about the forest what is a forest actually do you know what is a forest actually forest is a place where all the things like microorganisms like big things trees and wildlife are present at a single environment okay so it it is counted as forest now secondly we are going to learn about our wildlife then we are going to learn about the chipko movement the most famous movement for stopping the deforestation it was organized firstly in uttarakhand and then it came to rajasthan and bishnoi communities were present here so they opposed for the deforestation okay students now we are going to firstly see the introduction of this chapter today so first point about the chapter is we often hear or read about environmental problems these are often global level problems and we feel helpless to make any changes okay now we hear usually that global warming is occurring and temperature of the earth is rising and if we are hearing these kind of problems then what the steps we are taking to preserve our environment no steps we are taking by because we are polluting our environment by creating the conditions to pollute okay we are using the vehicles on a large scale so vehicle exhaust creates an environment where pollution is too much okay nextly we are polluting the water bodies by throwing plastic cans tin cans in them okay they they are uh, causing eutrophication even by the chemical fertilizers and pesticide that run off from the field so this is all about the disruption of the environment next point there are international laws and regulations and then there are our own national laws and acts for the environmental protection okay now next point we are going to learn about the forest and wildlife first we are going to understand that what is forest and secondly we are going to understand what is wildlife okay so first point is it is the existence of a wide variety of species of plants animals and microorganisms in a natural habitat within a particular environment okay so it is just the existence of species of plants and animals and even some microorganisms within a particular single habitat it is known as what forest okay now biodiversity of an area is the number of species or range of different life forms found there okay so if we consider about biodiversity what does a diversity means okay diversity means 
that a large amount is present okay large species are present or we can say the large amount of species are present in a single area that is counted as what bio diversity so biodiversity is the number of species or range of different life forms found there okay now next forest are biodiversity hot spots okay so if we consider about forest then they are what biodiversity hot spots next one of the main aim of conservation is to try and preserve the biodiversity we have inherited so first aim is that we have to conserve our biodiversity which have been inherited we are getting the natural resources okay it's a god creation that we are getting all the things from nature but what we are doing we are just destroying those things which have come from nature okay students now next the loss of biodiversity may lead to a loss of ecological stability so ecological stability will get disturbed how if some species will get died then what will happen they will be counted as an extinct so this will be a hazard to our environment why because some species even getting died then another species will also get died because of the disruption of the food chain and the food web which we also read in the last chapter so you are understanding this thing that how all the things are related to each other even all the biotic factors and abiotic factors are related to each other so we should conserve the biotic factors and even the abiotic factors like if we talk about natural resources if we get the coal or petrol as a inorganic substance from the nature then we should even preserve them for our future purpose as well okay now we are going to learn about the stakeholders of the forest okay so first is the conservation of forest depend on its forest resources or its various stakeholders who are as follows so firstly somebody has to take the right to preserve the forest okay the duty of some officers are assigned that you should preserve the forest okay the forest are taken in the guidance of them and they count even the number of species present in that forest okay so let us see people who live in or around forest okay so if we talk about stakeholders okay then the people or the tribal communities which are living inside the forest and even around the forest so let us see they depend on forest products for various aspects of their life what they do they just cut the wood from there they take the fruits and vegetables which grow in the forest from there so they are just totally dependent on the forest for their survival next the local people need large quantities of firewood and small timber okay in winter what they do they cut a large quantity of trees for the fire and even they use timber and sal or tea for the selling purpose as well next bamboo is used to make slats for huts and baskets for collecting and storing the food so bamboo has a major use because we can see in our homes also the sofas tables even the baskets are used for our daily purpose and which are made from bamboo next implements for agriculture fishing and hunting are largely made of wood okay so if we talk about implements that are used in agriculture even fishing and hunting are usually made of wood people collect fruits nuts and medicines from forest their cattle also graze in the forest okay so their cattle also graze in the forest they are even totally dependent on the forest so what they are doing actually the people who are living in or around the forest are taking the advantages of the forest okay they are cutting the wood for their purpose for cooking purpose okay even for selling purpose for making the baskets and chairs okay they are even dependent on the forest for fruits nuts and medicines okay now next forest department of the government so we are going to understand about what is the forest department of the government so which owns the land and controls the forest resources so it is the department which owns and even controls all the activities which are taking place in forest so people develop practices to ensure that forest resources are used in the sustainable manner now the people who are living inside the forest or around the forest are too sharp okay they use these resources in a sustainable manner if they will overuse these resources they will be caught by the government and they will be put into jail okay next 
the forest resources were ex over exploited after the british took control of the forest so if we talk about our past then british took control over the india and what happened forest were exploited by them okay over exploitation was there forest department of independent india then owned the land and controlled the resources of the forest but local needs such as herbs fruits and fodder were ignored okay so these things were ignored but forest government took the control over all the forest and did, did, did not allow any kind of activities which can occur inside the forest okay students monoculture of pine teak or eucalyptus have been started which can destroy the biodiversity of the area so monoculture means single culture mono means single okay so single culture of the pine teak and all these kind of trees which are very very helpful in making the furniture material okay it had been started which can destroy the biodiversity of that area okay the different species will be harmed by growing so much amount of pine teak or eucalyptus okay now we are going to talk about third point that is industrialist okay so first point is industrialists consider the forest as a source of raw material for its factories okay now why they are considering the forest as raw material they get a large amount of wood from the forest so they burn the wood and produce a large amount of heat inside the industries to make the raw materials okay and even to make different kind of things which they want to make so they are using the wood as a raw material which is coming from the forest itself okay these industries are not interested for sustainability of the forest in one area as they go to different area after cutting down all the trees in one area so this is too bad condition which is occurring in our society what are the industrialists doing they are in a greed of making new new things in their industries so they are cutting rapidly the trees in an area and if once the trees are cut down they move to the another area to get the wood okay so this is too bad condition which is taking place in our india okay now next we are going to talk about students wildlife and nature enthusiast okay so they are not dependent on the forest but conserve nature and take part in its management so they are not totally dependent on the forest why because some of the animals are carnivores even so they do not eat the autotrophs okay conservationist started with conserving large animals but are now preserving biodiversity as a whole as we talk about the conservation of forest and wildlife students so conservationists started the conservation of forest but now they are protecting the whole biodiversity in which the wildlife is also counted because if wildlife will be not there then forest will also be not there because through their fecal matter through their decomposition many minerals are supplied to the soil which help the plant to grow so they are both interrelated to each other the local people for instance the bishnoi community in rajasthan worked for conservation of forest and wildlife as a religious act okay so i told you about this thing the chipko movement which held in the rajasthan bishnoi communities just hugged and clung the trees to protect them from falling off okay thus management of forest resources has to take the interest of various stakeholders into account so if management should be there then they should take the stakeholders into account the people who are living inside the forest and outside the forest should made clear by this thing that should they should not over exploit the resources which are given to them by god okay it is the gift of nature which we have been receiving but what we are doing even the people which are living around it are destroying it by cutting the wood on a massive scale okay by just uh, extracting out the fruits or medicines in a massive scale so they are destroying the wildlife as well because tree is a purpose of many animals like monkeys if we say birds they just build up their nest to live there okay so they, we are just uh, breaking the homes of those animals and we those birds which are living on them okay so we should stop this practice next if we talk about that we are just over exploiting it so bishnoi community which was present in rajasthan they just clung the trees or hug the trees to make them free from getting deforested okay now 
ट्रेडिशनल यूज ऑफ फॉरेस्ट सो वॉट इज द ट्रेडिशनल यूज ऑफ फॉरेस्ट स्टूडेंट्स फर्स्ट एल्पाइन ग्रासलैंड इन हिमालयाज वर ग्रेज बाय शीप इन द समर ओके सो दिस इज जस्ट द टाइम टू टाइम यूज ऑफ फॉरेस्ट ओके इफ वी टॉक अबाउट एल्पाइन ग्रासलैंड इन हिमालयाज दे वर ग्रेज बाय शीप इन समर नेक्स्ट नोमेडिक शेफर्ड्स ड्रॉप देअर फ्लॉक एवरी समर इन दिस एरिया सो इफ वी टॉक अबाउट समर्स then nomadic shepherds drop their flocks in that part next but when the great, great himalayan national park was formed this practice was put to an end but when the national park was formed in himalayas this practice of the grazing of sheep was stopped this resulted in tall grasses preventing fresh growth okay so actually it resulted in very very tall grasses and even it was preventing the fresh growth okay now we are going to talk about the causes of damage to the forest how the forest is getting damaged because of our activities okay so students we are going to learn about this thing that how the damage to the forest is being caused okay so first point is local people damage forest to fulfill their daily needs okay why because they cut wood in a massive scale so that they can even cook their food okay they even take the medicinal plants to their home even they take the fruits and vegetables in a massive scale to feed their children okay so they are just over exploiting it next deforestation caused by industrial need so industries are in a greed to produce more and more so what they are doing they are cutting the trees on a rapid scale next deforestation caused for development projects like building road or dam so if buildings are constructed if dams are constructed then even the wood is required for it and deforestation occurs next by tourist or in making arrangements for tourist okay so this is also a point and next we are going to learn about the conservation of forest how we can conserve our forest what is our duty that we should perform to conserve our forest okay students so let us see it includes the following methods okay there are some methods through which we can conserve our forest so let us see this thing so first is afforestation what is afforestation students actually afforestation is it is the practice of transforming an area into forest it involves three types of forestry programs okay so it is just the practice in which what happens the transforming an area into forest okay now how new plants will be developed in that area and after some time that area will get developed into a forest now how we can do it there are many forestry programs so let us see the three type of forestry programs through which we can protect our forest okay so first is social and environmental forestry how we can do the social and environmental forestry it involves raising of the trees for firewood fodder agricultural implements for the benefit of rural and tribal communities okay so for the benefit of those people who are living in or around the forest it is very beneficial method okay so for tribal communities and even rural communities the firewood fodder and agricultural implements are counted in daily needs okay so first method is social and environmental forestry now the second method is agro forestry what is agro forestry it is an absolute commercial forestry developed to fulfill the need of various forest based industries it is done on the fallow land or free grazing lands okay so actually it is just done for the commercial purpose okay the agriculture is started on that area which is very fertile okay the soil fertility is first checked and the plants are grown on that area now when the plants will grow the agriculture will get started and it will be sold on the commercial basis means the earning from that part will be started okay now next point urban forestry okay so it involves growing of ornamental trees along roads vacant lands and common parts of the urban areas so in urban forestry the growing of ornamental trees now what do you understand by ornamental trees the trees which contains some of the flowers that are very bloomy and even they have a good aromatic fragrance okay so they are grown around the roads even vacant lands and common parts of the 
अर्बन एरियाज यू नो दिस थिंग वेरी वेल दैट इफ यू मूव इन द अर्बन सोसाइटी यू कैन सी मैनी फ्लार्स ऑफ डिफरेंट टाइप्स इवन हाइब्रिड फ्लार्स आर ग्रोन इन इवन हाउसेज ऑफ द पीपल ओके सो दे आर ग्रोइंग बिकॉज दे आर यूजफुल इन द अर्बन फॉरेस्ट्री सो देर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ फॉरेस्ट्री प्रोग्राम्स विच वी हैव स्टडीड फर्स्ट इज सोशल एंड इन्वायरमेंटल फॉरेस्ट्री सेकेंड वन इज एग्रो फॉरेस्ट्री एंड द थर्ड वन इज अर्बन फॉरेस्ट्री through these type of forestry we can protect our forest from getting exploited okay students now next people participate in forest management how people participate in forest management an example of araberi forest range of midnapur district so it is an example which we are taking into consideration so let us see 1272 hectares of badly degraded sal forest conserved by far seeing forest officer A K Banerjee. So A K Banerjee was a officer, and he started this program. He protected the forest, the Arabari forest. Okay. Now, the sal forest in West Bengal got reduced alarmingly in 1972. Okay. The sal is a very useful wood, which is used for making almiras, cupboards, even chairs. So it is used in furniture purpose. Now, what happened? In Arabari forest range, the sal trees were getting deforested on a large scale. So A K Banerjee took the step to preserve it. Okay, next surveillance and policing the protect forest resulted frequent clash between forest officials and the villagers. So it uh, maintained a clash between the officials and even the villagers which were living there because villagers were totally dependent on the sal for their survival. next the department then changed its strategy and in araberi forest villagers were involved in protection of the badly damaged sal forest so villagers were involved in again growing all those trees which were cut down of sal next in return villagers were given employment and were allowed to collect firewood and fodder at the nominal fee so they have to pay some fee if they want to collect firewood and even the fodder for grazing their animals by 1983 the araberi forest showed a remarkable recovery okay so any kind of recovery can take place in the forest if one person is there to take the step ak banerjee was the officer the forest officer who took the step to protect the araberi forest and the sal trees okay so sal trees you can see the villagers were only included and they were given employment for growing all those trees again and they were just charged about some fee for the fodder and even for firewood and in 1983 a drastic change was taken into place and araberi forest showed a remarkable recovery so this is how the forest can be protected if somebody is there to take the steps to protect it okay students now next economic growth and ecological conservation how the economic growth is taking place because of the forest and wildlife and we should conserve our ecologic that is we should maintain a ecological balance in our environment okay if we are disrupting it then we are disrupting ourselves so forest resources should be used in an environmentally and developmentally sound manner okay we should not over exploit the forest okay we are using the forest that is a good thing because it is a gift of nature but why we are over exploiting it this is not the way that we are treating the forest okay we are just over exploiting it we are uh, grapping all the firewood we are grapping the medicines even we are using it for our commercial purpose also without any permission of the people or government so this is bad okay so to stop it firstly the steps were taken by some forest officers and nextly it should be used in a very sound manner okay the sustainable manner next the benefits of controlled exploitation of resources goes to the people and the environment is also preserved so if we are not over exploiting it then the benefit will be given to us only because a large amount of oxygen will be present our environment will be purified we will get the different kind of medicines fruits and vegetables from the forest okay if the exploitation is too high economic and social development will be faster but the environment will further deteriorate how 
वी आर कटिंग डाउन द ट्रीज फॉर आर पर्पज वी वॉन्ट टू मेक कबर्ड वी वॉन्ट टू मेक चेयर्स टेबल्स बट वॉट वी आर डूइंग वी आर जस्ट कटिंग डाउन द ट्रीज ऑन अ रैपिड स्केल ओके सो वॉट विल हैपन वी आर यूजिंग फॉर आर कन्वीनियंस बट आफ्टर सम टाइम वॉट विल हैपन वी विल नॉट गेट द ट्रीज टू मेक टेबल चेयर्स ओके सो वॉट वी विल डू देन सो वी शुड यूज ऑल द रिसोर्स इन अ वेरी वेरी कन्वीनियंट वे ओके we should use natural resource cautiously so that economic growth and ecological conservation go hand in hand so all these natural resources should be used cautiously so that economic growth and convenience goes hand in hand okay students now we are going to talk about amrita devi bishnoi national award this is very very important topic of this chapter please write important over here okay if you are making the notes from this lecture then please write important over amrita devi bishnoi national award because in examinations questions are definitely asked from this part okay now in 1731 amrita devi bishnoi sacrificed her life along with 363 persons for protection of khejri trees in khejrali village near jodhpur in rajasthan so i told you about this thing amrita devi was the first female who took a step to protect the forest she just hugged and or clung the tree and what happened the people who cut it down the tree they just cut it down the amrita devi bishnoi as well at that moment so her life was sacrificed in protecting the khejri trees which were grown in the khejri village in jodhpur in rajasthan now in her memory government of india have recently instituted this award for wildlife conservation okay so this award is given to those people who are responsible for the wildlife conservation next we are going to talk about the chipko movement actually this was started from uttarakhand then it came to rajasthan okay so this was counted as a name chipko movement why we are using the word chipko over here chipko means to hug or to clung okay so the people of village protected the trees by hugging or clunging them so it was counted as a chipko movement and it spreaded all over the india in many years and trees were protected from falling off okay now the name of the movement comes from the hindi word chipko which means to embrace or to hug as the villagers hug the trees to prevent them from falling by the contractor so contractor when came they just hug the trees so they cannot cut the trees because the people have hugged them okay next chipko movement took place in village of mandal in the upper alaknanda valley of uttar pradesh in april 1973 okay so firstly it was started by the amrita devi because she was the female who started this movement by hugging the trees but then it move on to different parts of india and if we talk about uttar pradesh in april 1973 it was taken place by the alaknanda valley of uttar pradesh in the village of mandal sundar lal bahuguna a gandhian activist and philosopher played an important role in success of this movement so sundar lal bahuguna was a male who started the chipko movement in uttar pradesh okay and what happened he was very successful in protecting the forest from getting fallen off okay students so this is all about the chipko movement okay now this is a picture of chipko movement students you can see here this is a picture of amrita devi bishnoi do amrita devi bishnoi okay so she hugged the trees okay she clung the trees like this okay and some females were also included with her but she was the first one who took the step from protecting the forest to getting deforested so she was even cut down and even 360 villagers came to get survived in this movement okay but it was a good step by the people and now the forest are being protected because these movements are even taking place in different parts of the india today now also because there are some people who are just falling off the trees they are cutting down the trees on a massive scale even they are not concerned about the protective environment okay so this is a very serious step we should take if you are even seeing 
this kind of condition in your neighborhood or somewhere else then you should take the step to protect them from getting deforested okay students so we are going to learn a chipko movement through a very small video and we are going to understand that how chipko movement helped the trees from getting fallen or for getting deforested okay so let us start to look first is they occurred in the uttaranchal the first movement which occurred in the uttaranchal now how did it occur first thing is that chipko means to hug or to cling as you have understood the meaning of this thing now gora devi was responsible firstly for the chipko movement she started this movement actually okay now you will see here that what happened during that time a little girl saw one day that some contractors were coming on their way to cut down the trees with large saw and axe okay she informed this thing to gora devi now what happened gora devi with her sisters and villagers cling the trees and prevent them from falling off they fought with all the contractors okay they were not afraid of the contractors they fought with them and saved the trees so what happened the contractor believed that place okay they did not cut the trees so this is how that started now the sundarlal bahuguna was very responsible for the chipko movement in 1973 in the alaknanda valley now i am going to tell you about the story of rajasthan the khejdi village actually the khejdi trees were very famous of the khejdi village rajasthan now in the khejdi village the bishnoi communities used to take care all the trees of the forest now there was the ruler of mewar now this ruler of mewar advised his contractors and workers to bring the wood of khejri tree that is to deforest these khejri trees and bring the wood from them so what happened as the contractor reached there the females of that village hugged the trees okay they clinged with the trees so 363 relatives died due to this thing the deforestation procedure now the rural felt very guilty about this thing okay he was very guilty that what i have done so he signed a petition that from now onwards no tree will be shed off okay no tree will be cut it down that is no deforestation will take place so students it is very responsible thing and it is our duty to take care of the trees so it is our duty to save and preserve them okay students now did you understand about the chipko movement now students we are going to learn this thing that water as a basic natural resource now we know this thing that natural resource counts water natural resource count forest and wildlife but how water is the basic natural resource if water is not available to us then can we survive or not so we are going to learn about this thing in this particular slide okay so it is a valuable national asset okay now why we are using the word national asset because it is totally valuable okay next it is main requirement of human beings okay why it is main requirement because without water we cannot survive as to is necessary for a human being and even an animal to survive okay because it regulates some metabolic activities in the human beings next point water is of two types for salt water and fresh water so if i want to tell you this thing then you can write it over here only 3% about of fresh water is available on our earth for drinking purpose which we call as potable water and rest is salty water okay salty water is converted to potable water by desalination process or reverse osmosis which we have read i think so in last chapters okay students so now here you can see fresh water is an unlimited natural resource it can be obtained from three natural resources first rain water surface water and ground water okay so it is a basic natural resource which can be obtained from three ways first you know this thing very well that rainfall is a essential requirement okay through rainfall the water is collected in dams and rivers okay next surface water surface water is available to us okay next 
ग्राउंड वाटर ग्राउंड वाटर इफ यू वांट टू एक्सट्रैक्ट देन वी यूज द वेल्स और वी यूज द मोटर्स टू टेक आउट ऑन द अपर सरफेस ऑफ द अर्थ ओके नेक्स्ट ह्यूमन इंटरवेंशन पॉल्यूट्स वाटर एंड आल्सो चेंजेस द अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ द वाटर इन वेरियस रीजन्स नाउ इफ वी आर ओवर एक्सप्लॉयटिंग द वाटर इफ वी आर नॉट यूजिंग द वाटर इन अ प्रॉपर वे देन वॉट वी आर डूइंग वी आर पल्यूटिंग द वाटर ओके now you consider a case for an example over here if a farmer is irrigating the field then he is using lot of amount of pesticides and fertilizer inside the field and the river is nearby to the field then what will happen the rainfall will come the fertilizers and pesticide will run off in the water stream in the river then what will happen students the eutrophication will occur and because of eutrophication water pollution will be caused the aquatic life will get disturbed which is present inside the river so what we are doing we are just polluting the water by using these kind of certain chemicals which are non biodegradable okay next we are going to learn about the water sources from how we can get the water okay so first is rain in india are due to monsoon so monsoon season come and a lot of amount of water is collected in dams and reservoirs next failure to sustain underground water due to loss of vegetative cover next development of water demanding crop and pollution from industrial effluents so actually water pollution is caused by because industrial effluents are directly dumped inside the water okay even some power plants which are running over there they just supply direct heat to the river stream so this is causing damage to the aquatic life okay next small dams canals and tanks were used for irrigation purpose to fulfill the basic minimum needs okay so the rainfall water is collected inside the dams canals tanks reservoirs and then it is used in the future purpose when there is a scarcity of water next large dams and canals were made by british as well as our own government due to the mega projects local irrigation methods got neglected and the local people lost control over management of the local water sources okay so if we talk about british world then in that time large dams were created large canals were built at that time but our government has also taken some mega projects to develop the dams and even reservoirs in different places but if we talk about local irrigation methods so they were got neglected and the local people lost control over management of local water so what they do they just take out a lot of amount of water from the dams and rivers and they use it for irrigation purpose but they forget this thing that water is present in a limited quantity on earth okay so they should use th those water only which is suitable for the irrigation purpose and they should not over exploit the water resources okay now we are going to learn about the management of water resources how we can management the water resources so first is it includes first integrated water shed plan for drinking irrigation and industrial uses okay so first if we take the look over here so integrated water shed plan is organized for drinking purpose for irrigation and industrial use next is flood control okay flood is taken control by the methods of water resources next transfer of surplus water to water deficient basins by interlinking of the river so in different rivers are interlinked with each other and the river which is containing a lot of amount of water is being transferred to that river through canal systems and through this the water is being conserved okay next hydrogeological survey to identify over exploited areas so each and every time the survey is done in every year so that we came to know about this thing that the water is not getting over exploited in that areas okay next artificial recharging of ground water okay so ground water is artificially recharged how it is recharged through many power plants and mechanisms it is recharged okay naturally it is recharged by rainfall okay next mass awareness programs through public or private agencies so if we talk about public and private agencies today very massive programs are being organized so that the people should be aware about this thing that only 3% of the fresh water is left behind on earth surface and even if we are ex over exploiting it then what we will get okay we, there will be no potable water available to drink okay we should use the water in a limited quantity okay now we are going to understand what are dams okay 
so they are they are massive barriers built across rivers and streams to confine and utilize the flow of water for human purpose such as irrigation and generation of the electricity so dam is an area which is built near the rivers excess amount of water which is entering inside the rivers is transferred to the dam and then it is used in the hydroelectric power generation okay large dams can also ensure the storage of adequate water so many amount of water can be stored in a particular dam and it can be used for future purpose canal system leading from dams transfer large quantity of water up to great distances example indira gandhi canal of rajasthan brought greenery to considerable areas so indira gandhi canal is a very large canal which is built okay and all the water which is being transferred to this moves to the different cities or different states so that the water requirement can be fulfilled over there next purpose for building a dam what should be a purpose for building the dam so first is generation of electricity second one is irrigation so first is generation of electricity electricity generation through hydro power plant is done next irrigation so it is used in the irrigation purposes next control of flood which either stops or slows the amount of water in the river so the flood which comes can stop the large amount of water that comes inside the river okay students so control of the flood is necessary okay now criticism about large dam so it is being criticized why because a lot of amount of water is transferred to the dam okay so first is social problems what are social problems they displace large number of farmers and tribals why because the farmers and the tribals which are living in that area are removed from there and they get migrated into different cities or towns so it is a social problem which is occurring in construction of the dam next economic problems what are economic problems they consume huge amount of public money without proportionate benefit okay so if we are constructing a new dam then we need a lot of amount of money in crores to construct the dam okay so it is just we can say that we are not getting a proportionate benefit even if we are putting a lot of amount of money in construction next environmental problems what are environmental problems as they cause deforestation and loss of biological diversity so what actually first we are deforesting the forest why because firstly the forest will be cleared then the tribal communities which are living in that area will be cleared out then the land will be barren after making the land barren it the construction of the dams are started so what we are doing firstly we are causing the problems to the people next we are not economically sure about that dam next uh, the environmental problems are being caused because we are causing deforestation and loss of biological diversity why because the animals which are living in that area will get disturbed and get migrated from one area to that area so the survival will make impossible for them okay due to mismanagement in distribution of water the benefit of constructing a dam goes to few people only for example people close to the water source grow water intensive crop like sugarcane and rice while people farther downstream do not get any water so this resulted in discontentment among the people who have been displaced by building of a dam okay so the people who are living nearby area of the dam they proper irrigate the field they can grow the crops like sugarcane okay like rice because it requires a large amount of water but what about the people who are living in the areas where there is water scarcity so how they will get a large amount of water to grow the crops and to make the earnings for them so this is a mismanagement which is occurring okay students now we are going to understand the water shed management what is water shed management so it means scientific conservation of soil and water to increase the biomass production okay so to increase the biomass production it is just a scientific way through which we can conserve the soil and water so first water shed management not only increases the production and income of the water shed community but also overcomes drought and the flood so actually if we are conserving water on a proper basis then we are free from two types of conditions first drought and second one is flood next it increases the life of downstream dams and even reservoirs okay next if we are going to talk about water harvesting 
then water harvesting is necessary why we should protect the rainfall water okay the water which is coming from rainfall it is very very important and it can be stored in the large tanks for using in a future purpose okay so how water harvesting is done firstly it means capturing rain water where it falls or capturing the run of water in local area and taking measures to keep the water clean by not allowing polluting activities to take place okay so what is done in water harvesting students actually in water harvesting what happens the harvesting of the rain water is done and this rain water is collected inside the tanks big large tanks so that it can be used for the future purpose okay now it is most common in the south area because in south area of india the rainfall usually occurs till 6 months okay so traditional techniques of water harvesting how can we harvest the water in traditional actually they were the primitive techniques which were used by the people so let us see water harvesting techniques are mainly location specific they should be location specific why because if the rainfall is not too much in that area and you have constructed the tank then why we are constructing okay why we are wasting money on construction of tank okay so it is an age old concept in india okay khadins tanks and nadis in rajasthan so there were three types of system that is khadins tanks or nadis for protection of the rainwater bandras and tals in maharashtra so different names are given to different type of protecting mechanism which are taking place of the rainwater so ahars and pines in bihar next kuis in himachal pradesh ponds in kandi belt of jammu eris tanks in tamil nadu sugar gams in kerala kattas in karnataka okay due to own control of local population over exploitation of the local water resources is reduced if the people are illiterate they use the water in a proper sustainable way in a cautious way then it will not be over exploited in that area so these are the different names which are given for the protection of the rain water okay this these were the traditional ways through which the pro protection of the water occurred in the primitive time okay now some of the water harvesting techniques are so these are the techniques which are occurring in the modern world so let us see capturing of runoff water from rooftops so rooftops are connected with the pipes so what happens when rain water is falling on the roof then the pipe is supplying all that rain water in the underground tanks which has been built in the houses next capturing of runoff water from local catchment as well next capturing seasonal flood water from local stream so this flood water is even drained into the large channels and then it is transferred to big dams and rivers next benefits of water harvesting what is the benefit of water harvesting so first it provide drinking water it provide irrigation water it increase in ground water resources reduces the storm water discharge urban flood and overloading of the sewage treatment plant so these are very really easy points to understand okay why we need water you know this thing very well we want to drink it we want to wash our clothes okay so we need water to irrigate the fields and in many purposes okay students now let's see the traditional water harvesting system what is the traditional hot water harvesting system so the water harvesting structures are mainly crescent shaped okay they are crescent shaped this is a crescent shaped structure that is moon like structure next monsoon rain fills ponds behind the structure so when monsoon rains occur they fill the point ponds behind the structures as well the large structure hold water throughout the year while most dry up after monsoon so some structures hold the water throughout the year but some structure get dry up why because the evaporation of the water occurs next main purpose of this system is to recharge the ground water and not to hold surface water okay so all the water is transferred to the ground water through streams okay students so you can see here this is the khadin system in this khadin system what is happening students there is a shallow dug well which is created over here okay now this water has been recharged through the seepage which is occurring from this area okay this is the catchment area now what will happen the rainfall occur in the catchment area and this rainfall will get seeped inside the soil and through soil it will get entered inside the khadin bund which is created over here okay 
now this khadin mand will transfer all the water in the shallow dug well so this is how the water is regenerated okay now we are going to talk about pollution of ganga this was a serious major topic okay so student this is a very small assignment for you all this is the assignment number 1 in which you have to solve the module and do your analysis okay students so we have talked about the forest and wildlife and even water as a precious resource in this lecture now in the next lecture we are going to talk about many more natural resources and the ganga action plan which was taken to purify the ganga water okay students so be tuned for the last lecture and it will be our last lecture of your class so give me the permission to leave students thank you